Well, hello, friends, and thank you for starting your week off in the Word of God. You know, speaking of starting the week off, we got it started well in worship yesterday together with the family of God, declaring the praises of Jesus, celebrating who He is and what He's done. And we want to continue building on that by staying in the Word so that the Word can stay in us. Speaking of the Word, we're in Matthew chapter 16, and I should have done this last week, and I'm sorry, but I want to commend you for those of you who have committed to read through the whole New Testament this year with us. We're already halfway through the first and longest book of the New Testament. Matthew has 28 chapters. You're over halfway there. So good job. Stay committed. And let's stay focused on what we're seeking to do by being transformed through the renewing of our mind. Now, today we're looking at Matthew chapter 16. I want us to focus, I want to focus with you on verses 13 through 18, which say, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say, the ba- some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he asked them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus responded, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I also say that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. So here we have the confession section. Uh, It it comes to us in different ways and formats in the Gospels, but it all comes back to the same two questions. Number one, Jesus asking the crowd or asking the disciples, who do the people say that I am? And then, of course, ultimately Peter stepping in as the spokesperson and typically the one who puts his foot in his mouth. Him proclaiming very strongly the the core conviction they have. And that's the thing I want you to think about. Confession typically follows that core conviction that we have about something or someone. Well, in this case, the crowds, the people, he asked them, who do the people say that I am? And so they're saying, well, the crowds believe you to be John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. So out of their conviction, and their conviction was centered in their belief of who he is. And, and that belief was probably formed around, you know, first of all, he obviously had power. And some of the prophets, like Elijah, performed great miracles. The, many of the prophets, you know, Elisha had great power to perform miracles. So when they saw the miracles, they knew he had great power. Um, when they heard him speak, they knew that his words were powerful as well. Of course, the prophets were called prophets because they spoke the word of God. But the problem they had is they did they failed to believe, or they refused to believe, I guess is the way we should say that, that Messiah would do the other things that Jesus did. Like Uh, eat with sinners and tax collectors, like touch lepers, some of the things like dwell with the outcast. They just didn't see their Messiah in that way. And plus he he hadn't ascended to some sort of a governmental or, or kingly position where he would initiate a great battle against the Romans. He hadn't done that yet. And so for the people, their conviction was first of all in what they saw him do, but also in the fact that he hadn't quite met their expectations. Then we see Peter speak in and say, but we believe you to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. Out of their core conviction came this dynamic confession. And Jesus, obviously, by his declaration, blessed, indicates that you got it right. You absolutely understand that even though I haven't done these things that people expect me to do from a military standpoint, from a governmental standpoint, or an authoritative position, that I have done exactly what was prophesied about me, and I am am in the process of getting ready to do exactly what was prophesied about me. You are blessed because you believe that. And it's a reminder to us that who we truly believe Jesus to be will ultimately show up in confession. And I don't mean confession just by what we say. I mean confession in what we do. Maybe I should use the word commitment. That who we truly believe our Lord to be in conviction will ultimately show up in our commitment. And sadly to say, there are many, well, there are some who proclaim Jesus as Lord with their mouth in confession, and yet their commitment to him does not match that at all. Because if we truly believe him to be Lord, Jesus says we're going to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and we're going to follow him. Jesus says we're going to lose our life. So in order we can gain it in being obedient to his will. We are going to be totally submitted and committed to him as Lord. He has total rule and reign. And that's just simply not true for many. Or for some. I keep saying me. I'm sorry. For some. 
So let's make certain today, you know, as we're thinking about the day ahead of us, or maybe we're reflecting on the day behind us, let's be honest. Is the conviction we hold about who Jesus is showing truly showing up in our commitments, our commitments to read His Word daily in personal worship, our commitments to surrender to Him the great back to Him the great blessings He's given us, our commitments to engage others with the gospel, and that's just three of many commitments that we should make on a daily basis. So ultimately, my confession. And my commitment is going to match the conviction I have about who Jesus is. Just real quickly, there's that statement in the bottom, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. Where he's going at with that is this. It's not Peter that's going to be the foundation of the church. Absolutely not. No man could handle that. No, what he means is, he could mean one of two things. One, Peter's confession of his lordship will be the foundation of the church, and that's certainly true. You read the New Testament, you read all through the epistles, Jesus is the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone. But there are some who say that it's not just the confession, but it's also the writings and the teachings that flow out of that confession. Hence, Paul is talking about the apostles and the prophets are the foundation of the church, Jesus being the chief cornerstone. So he might be saying, hey, your confession as it will flow through the teachings that you will present, because ultimately it was the teachings that had the dynamic impact. So just remember, no man can serve as the foundation of our Lord's church. Jesus Christ alone is the foundation. And so any tradition built upon the man being the the, the foundation is a false teaching. And we need to be careful with that. And we need to try to help our do our best to help others understand the, uh, the heresy that is in that teaching. Well, I love you, friends. I pray your week goes well. I pray it's a dynamic week of loving God supremely, loving one another just like we love our Lord, and of living sin.